Hey, 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 what's up, what's up? Welcome back. This is John. We're going to talk about stock market for the the week of November 1st, Friday, November 1st. This is uh, recording at nighttime, 8.03 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, this video is just for my uh, education and um, kind of my going back and understanding the market step by step. So this is not a recommendation for any investment. So disclaimer, disclaimer, and disclaimer. All right, wanna talk a couple of stock here. Uh, basically like, hey, what happened with this week? What happened with FOMC? What happened with uh, the stock? We are basically making a new high. So. So all that drop basically it's got negate negated and now we're making a new high. So where are we going from here? So uh my prediction that we're gonna go to thirty one hundred um between thirty one hundred to thirty one twenty five. You see that red line right there? That is my expectation. However, before we go all the way up, there's gonna be a pullback because we are in overbought condition. So you have to understand, market will not go straight right away. So there's gonna be some pullback here and there and then start making a new high again. Now, where are we going from here? Uh, well, basically this is Friday, so Monday. What's gonna happen on Monday, between Monday till um, November, you know, the end of November, right? So. Thanksgiving is gonna be here. There's gonna be a lot of holidays. So you have to understand that's mean there's gonna be low volume coming into the market. Um, so most likely the seller, the buyer, the hedge fund, they're gonna take an early holiday, especially on the three days weekend, um, somewhere in Thanksgiving and then December, right? So you have to understand what's gonna happen. Um, yeah, although the last year, on December, we do see a big pullback during like, you know, um, toward at the end of the, um, at the end of the uh, the year. If, let me pull that, that for you. You see right there, that's that uh, July. Let me pull the one from weekly then. So we can see the bigger, yeah, all right. See this one, September, October, and then December, okay? Now you can see that December, there's a big pullback from 276, I'm looking at the XPY weekly here, and then all the way to 230. So that's like 40 point drop within a week, crazy drop. And it's become oversold and then it bounced back on beginning of the year. Um, we, were, we were able to pull some trigger here to go long and then we were able to sell it in this way. So, but my point is right now, will we see the same one again on December or maybe in Thanksgiving or maybe this pullback? I would, I don't think so. The reason why, if you look at this, starting September, we're making a high and low, right? Now, if you compare with this, it's high and high. So that's where the, that's where I'm telling you guys basically or myself at this point right um i don't think there's gonna be a big pullback coming up like december so but i'm thinking that we're gonna uh hit higher um after a minor pullback so this is my prediction um the way how i see it we basically break this all-time high and also the resistance uh for i don't know how many is that like one two three four five six right and then seven so seven weeks that basically we're trying to um hit new high but we're not able to and then we pull back big and then try again one more time and then a couple time break and then just like sideways and then we start making a low high right this is the key low high and then we break those basically to higher Trade war is not done yet, right? So it, there's still a lot of unknown out there, but the market still like it. I mean, we basically getting a lot of free money from FOMC or from Fed, 
they basically want to reduce interest rate again, or they already did basically. So the money that we borrow from the Fed is basically become less and less um, cheap. I'm sorry, I'll take it back. It's, it's less than less expensive. So it is a lot cheaper now, right? It's so like back in 2009 to 2010, we basically making like the interest rate like z almost zero. So which is people that borrowing the money, they can borrow money with very, very cheap interest. And now they can flip it with their business, you know, making a lot of money. So all that thing is coming back again. That's why the market is like really like it because anything what the trade war, it's going to get offset with the, with the cheaper interest rate. So that's how they pour the money into the market. So right now, if you think this, okay, let's say you borrow a credit card. I'm not, I'm not teaching you guys disclaimer, but put the time out here. I'm not teaching you guys to do this, but I'm saying is let's say you borrow a money on credit card with the zero APR. So 12 months, you basically getting zero APR, free money. Well, you're borrowing your money with zero interest, right? So you're not paying that. And then you can use that money for something else where you can, you know, make, I don't know, five grand, six grand, or 10,000 a year. So technically that's awesome because that's where the money is, right? You're borrowing with free interest and then you use it for something else where you can get a capital and return back on that. So that's kind of the idea where's the Fed coming. And then they're buying a lot of billion dollar of, um, uh, I got to double check. I think there's a treasury uh, this morning. There's a tweet, I believe. I got to double check on that. But if you have time, take a look on uh, the news. I believe that's what happened. So that's why the market is not even pulling back today. If you look at today, gosh, it's just like sideways. Is very muted, and uh, let me pull one minute here. See, this is what happened. We basically open gap. This is early in the morning because there's a news on unemployment here, and then after that, it's a bad number to be honest with you. And then after that, we just pop higher, just sideways. This is the bull flag, right? We're not even pulling back here. So um, let me put the mark here. If Monday we don't pull anything lower than that, we're still making a higher. So that's how I look at step by step, right? Um, and then, um, like, I, like I mentioned to you, it's where are we going from here? I think we're gonna hit about 310 on SPY or around 3, uh, 311. So that's kind of my expectation. I don't know the time frame, but eventually we are, look at that. The MACD it's on weekly is making a curve. We're not even overbought on weekly, but on daily, we are overbought, okay? That's something that you need to pay attention. We are almost overbought here, and then also on this one. So I'm not gonna short the market. I'm gonna wait until I see a doji or I see a topping tail, then that's where I'm gonna start pulling the trigger. Um, there's multiple ways we can play this. We can sell the credit puts call on the top. And then also uh, when it's pulled back, then we, you sell another one on the bottom, which is the put. So pretty smart idea. You can make money with that. Or you can just buy a put. Uh, once it's, once it's go up again, then you just had them. Or you can basically just wait, you know, buy a longer period of, um, time frame on the on the option or you can just buy a, a stock from there just share it just short it but i don't recommend it that way um the other way i want to talk about it's the uh nasdaq i know my battery is getting low now so i'm gonna have to make it quick here so nasdaq is the same scenario right um and then smh which is the um this is this is the leader right now. SMH is making a new new high, while the other one is also already broke up. Uh, it hasn't hadn't broke um, about a week ago, but SMH already break a new high, and then IBB, uh, which is biotech, is making a new new comeback. It's a little bit overbought here, but it's great. It's been like 96 to 109. That's like 20 points in a couple of weeks. I was two weeks, I guess. So it's amazing, IBB. Um, 
and then IWM is also making a new high. It broke um, this descending trend line or downtrend, right? And then it broke with this uh, one big candle today with a volume. So this is a good thing because there is a lot of participant on the uh, small cap. So I am waiting to see if we broke this, then the next target would be 160. And then we're basically reaching out to 165 to 166. So that'll be something that you wanna pay attention. I'm gonna look carefully on this next week as well as we move higher. All right, let's talk about a couple of stock that I own. Uh, Tefa, I did sell Tefa today. Um, I still own five contract on a strike eight put, which is I'm selling it. As long Tefa is above eight on this by December, I'm pocketing the six hundred dollar. I believe uh, that that's what I have. And then I sold the uh, five strike and also the eight strike. So that's about six hundred dollar net profit on that. Um, the reason why I'm selling Tefa because the stock is not moving uh, for a couple of days uh, or week here. Um, I just want to reduce exposure to the long side. I do think there's going to be some um, higher higher here, which is the uh, ten dollar. That's still my target, but it's okay. I'm still you know holding the other one, so uh, I'm going to keep it that way. So I don't have too much you know. Um, exposure on the long side, like I mentioned earlier. So let's take a look at EA here. Uh, I own EA, I still have 10 contract. Um, this guy basically, it's still just sideways since the report. So nothing really much do here. I wanna see the, we broke 97 and then test the 100. That's kind of my target. And then after that, I wanna sell it from there because um, like I mentioned, I think we are making high high. Um, I just want to take profit and then uh, see if there's any opportunity to kind of reassess again. The same thing with ATDI. Um, ATDI will have earning on November 7. Um, that will be my take. I want to sell half or at least reduce it to uh, three or five contract uh, and then take profit from there. I think this stock will have a higher chance to go higher. Um, because they've been they've been on this bottom right here, the curve, for a while, and then we're making a bull flag on here. If you can look at here, this is also a cup handle too. So, and then it's making curve on weekly. So this stock has potential to go back to this level, which is the sixty to sixty five to seventy. That will be my higher target. Um, I don't know if we're gonna make to another higher, which is the eighty five, but we'll see. Depending everything to their report, they are making a good money with the new um, game. Um, I believe there is a new game that just released and everything just sold out right away. Um, and then there's a new game coming up with Diablo 4. So they're making a very, very good um, pipe, uh, product pipeline on this one. So um, I probably will hold this a little bit longer compared to EA. Um, so that will be my take. And then the other one is what I have is VBIV. This is one thing that I wanna kind of admit that I made a mistake here. I supposed to sell half on this. Um, it was giving me about $500 profit on this level because it's filling the gap and I did not sell it. And then it pulled back. I mean, at this point right now, I still have 13,000 share. So I'm just gonna hold it until it break this level again and then start going to the 82 and then a dollar uh, eventually. But it's long term, you gotta wait it. Uh, TSV, I do own position on Robinhood on this one. Um, I supposed to make, uh, buy more, but I did not uh, I did not do that. So it's kind of a kind of regret for me. Um, this one will start going back again and, and kind of filling up the gap to $10. So just wait, this is also one of the biotech um, like I mentioned, IBB was making a very good comeback. There's gonna be a pullback here, but it's viable. Anything hit back to that uh, 50 moving average, 675, is a viable. 
So that's just my the way I look at stuff. Uh, I do think CBIO, I think. Uh, yeah, CBIO, yep. Um, yeah, I supposed to buy buy again on this one. Um, I don't know about this stock too much though, but I have it a uh, thousand shares, so it's a very small, um, it's very small share to be honest with you. So it's just a matter of, I think my average it was about eight. So it's a long term. I own a share, not a, a stock, not a not an option. Uh, Neo, um, this is basically a disappointment, <laughs> a disappointment uh, stock. Let's take a look here. Um, I bought it eight, and then I bought five. I bought six, and then I bought four. I bought two and a half, and it still keep going down. It's a, it's a long term. Um, I own a s option and a stock option basically back uh, all the way to January 2021. So it's about another e two years, another year and a half. Uh, I'm not to worry about that. Probably will go back to four eventually by the time. And then um, the the stock basically averaged about like four dollars something. So I'm just gonna wait out um, on that one. Um, other than that, I like gold. Um, it's kind of interesting today that stock is making a new high and then gold also positive. So I'm start thinking that I want to buy gold from here because I'm thinking if the market start pulling back, this guy will pop quick. Uh, and then it's been like, it's been sideways for a while. So um, yeah, it's amazing. I can see that it's making a curve there. Um, so that's pretty much I have. Um, yeah. I hope you guys learned something and keep in mind, just um, be careful. The market is making a high high. Um, I don't know how far you really want to push the stock basically to go higher and higher, but I got to be cautious um, about, yeah, about the stock market right now. I mean, we're kind of, Making a high. Uh, I like Roku. I probably want to see Roku next week. Um, uh, they have an earning. So if it's pullback, 132, I want to buy or sell the put here. If it's pop, I probably will sell the call. So I just have to see how to play this. Because eventually, if it's pop, that eventually is going to be overbought. So uh, Tesla. Okay, I just have to see day by day, because I cannot really predict much. Um, Tesla, I like this with the pullback I mentioned last week. If you own Tesla, you gotta sell this. Um, of course, if you're longer, longer and longer, then yeah, just hold it. I mean, market is gonna be, go up and down, right? Um, I don't think the Tesla will go back and fill the gap, to be honest with you. I think they're gonna be just playing on this 300 level for a while. Uh, it is still overbought, so there's still a chance to pull back 300. Um, I wanna do the iron condor here, basically. So I have to see like where it's going before I pull the trigger, because I don't wanna be like stuck in the middle of, you know, the market start pulling back big. So, all right, that's all I have. I'm gonna keep it nice and short. Um, if you guys have any question, you know where to find me. Other than that, just enjoy weekend and uh, we'll talk again next week.